Hello, this is Kathleen Listen, and welcome to the vibration episode, the vibration video. So I am a certified lymphedema therapist and board certified massage therapist. We're here at my studio in San Diego. I'm the author of the Plastic Surgery Recovery Handbook, and I help people after plastic surgery, including liposuction, tummy tucks, Brazilian butt lifts, mommy makeovers, facelifts, to reduce our swelling with manual lymphatic drainage. And I also do um, deeper techniques for fibrosis. So I have a few um, classes, online classes, that give um, continuing education the CE credits. I'm uh, with uh, Nick Timba, the approved provider um, for Nick Timba. So the classes will give you that certificate. And they handle uh, plastic surgery recovery massage, including the fibrosis massage. But I'm getting a lot of questions um, because I like to post on Instagram and TikTok about the new tools that I use for my clients. And one of them is this one. Um, it's called the Cellulite Releaser. Um, it has research behind it um, for the reduction of cellulite. I actually use it... Um, I'm th in the theory that it's a vibration tool. It also has these little nubs on it. And um, I use it to help um, stimulate the lymphatic system to work faster um, for people who are recovering from plastic surgery. Um, so I also have, that's not, not the only tool. Um, I have two uh, machines that I recommend to my clients and I do have an online video which shows um, self-massage for fibrosis after liposuction um, that I recommend this. This is a vibrating massage ball. So I don't know if you can hear it or see it. It's actually vibrating um, and it's a USB port. And this is as well, like you, you um, recharge it with the USB. And this is something that the client can use to massage on themselves. Again, that nubby irregular surface. I also, um, like this little machine, it's a little bit gentler. It is also, if you press the button, um, it this is battery operated and um, you just get the vibration through these four um, larger knobs and then the person can massage themselves, someone else can massage them. It's nice, it's handheld and um, I like it because it's kind of um, easier to you, there's actually a hand holding, whereas this one you have to kind of grasp it with your hand and roll it around. But this one is nice because you can roll it in any 360 direction. It's very intuitive. Um, so I showed some vibration tools, but let's start at the beginning. So what is vibration? Vibration is a mechanical stimulus char characterized by an oscillatory motion. So it's an oscillating motion. And there's several different kinds that I've found that I'm really interested in. Um, the local, like what I call like a local vibration, you just, if you put this on the hand, it's just, you know, mostly going to vibrate the hand. If you put on the abdomen, it vibrates the abdomen, but it's not necessarily going to affect your foot. There's also wearable vibration, um, which I really wish there would be more of. That it, it can take the form of like a glove. Um, if someone has the arthritis, it can take the form of, they even, I've seen some where it's like a knee um, it looks like a knee brace. It's not a knee brace. In fact, it's a vibration that goes all the way around the knee or um, I guess the elbow. Um, and then there's whole body vibration. You may have seen this a lot. It's a vibration plate that someone can stand on. And then that pushes the vibration through. It starts in the feet and gives the vibration to the entire body. So how might these help? Um, there ha there's a lot of research on this and in the links to this video I'll put the studies I definitely want you before you use this in your practice I want you to read and really know what vibration is what it's not what it can do what are the contraindications um, so the first thing is it has some effect on the lymphatic system um, that's the Stewart paper um, also, uh, it, it may have some effect on osteoarthritis. Um, that's like I said, there are, there are gloves um, that are used, like a wearable piece of clothing that has vibration built into it. Um, there's interesting research that um, using vibration will help reduce delayed onset muscle soreness after exercise. And I'd really like to think about that more because what part of the vibration is actually um, 
reducing the delayed onset muscle soreness? Is that because of the lymphatic component? Is it because of something else? I'd love to know more. And then also we know there's another product which is on the market, which is used by a uh, physical therapist, which I don't have one in my office, but it's called a LymphaTouch. And it's a combination of negative compression, so like a cupping and vibration. So now that we've kind of, um, I've given you some reading material and we've looked a little bit at what vibration um, has shown in you know the research and in practice, how might it harm people? Is very important. What like what are the contraindications? Um, I want to know before I will just go and use vibration tool on somebody. Why is that swelling there? So if someone has swelling in their legs that they want to get you know reduce, is it because of congestive heart failure? Is it because of liver failure? Is it because of kidney failure? All those things are uh, are um they need to be handled by a doctor and that swelling is not necessarily um good it's not necessarily a good thing for the body to reduce swelling with those diagnoses um so i use the same contraindications as i would for where the times that i wouldn't give someone a manual lymphatic drainage massage so if i won't do mld on you i won't do vibration on you either if you have an active infection um, and you, you know, either you're not taking um, any antibiotics or you've taken antibiotics for less than 72 hours, I wouldn't do the massage on you. So I'm not going to do the vibration on you either. Um, also interesting, very, very interesting and valuable to note is shearing. So a part of the vibration is that it's a shearing force. So that's something that's a huge, giant, absolute no-no after someone has a tummy tuck before six weeks. Specifically before the doctor, their surgeon says that they can return to vigorous exercise. If they can't do vigorous exercise, don't put that shearing force anywhere near their abdominoplasty and understand what the extent of these operations are, how far it goes. It's not just the scar, it's much bigger operation inside of their body that they can't have that shearing force. And we see that as well for scars. And this is the um, Franco paper, which I'll, I'll, again, I'll link it and definitely look at this. It's a quick read, it has a picture. Th this gentleman had a scar in his hand. He had read on the internet or wherever that if you use the whole body vibration, if you use vibration on a scar, it might reduce a scar. So he went ahead and put his hand on a whole body vibration plate and ended up getting a blister on it again because of that shearing force. Um, so know what you're working on and be able to explain to yourself and the client why are you using it and basically if you would not use friction or shear on something um, don't use vibration on it thinking that it's an easier friendlier technique because it's very powerful adhesion specifically if there's going to be some negative effect of working on that adhesion i would not use uh, vibration on it so how do i use it um, so first i talk to my clients Again, there's videos for the self-massage, my self-massage for fibrosis after liposuction videos, liposuction on the body, on the abdomen, on the back, on the arms, on the thighs. So this is not for liposuction underneath the chin, in the face, anything like that. But I do talk about for clients how you can use this and I kind of show a little bit more about this. So I would definitely um, recommend it to a client um, if I use it in the office and that they can definitely also use it at home. I really like using this tool in the office for the um, leg liposuction, especially if it has a little bit of fibrosis um, or the arm. And I've also used it a little bit on abdominal liposuction. Again, this is usually when fibrosis is setting in and I'm really gonna wanna use the nubbiness and the vibration part of this tool. They are already cleared for exercise. So we know that the inputting, inputting these forces are not going to affect um, their results. 
And then I will also use this in the direction that we would do menial lymphatic drainage um, in the watershed direction to kind of uh, encourage the body to move its lymphatic fluid. Because again, we know because of the Stewart article that um, vibration in general may have an effect on the body's lymphatic system. And I also had a, um, I have a client that had liposuction for her lipedema and I'm using this on her um, even though, you know, she's several months out and she does say that she feels a drain, like she feels her lymphatic fluid moving in her body and, and she's able to, to drain, which is urinate, she's able to like urinate it out. So she likes this a lot. It's very gentle. Um, what I've, I would suggest if you're going to buy one of these, like buy one and then practice on yourself. What I found is if I have the machine off and I'm doing a massage with these nubby things on my thigh, it feels a lot more intense than if I turn the machine on and, you know, and using the same thing, oil, same pressure, it feels less intense. Um, so if someone has pain, you know, or has a low tolerance for pressure with a massage, this might be an option as well. Um, I don't specifically use it to work on fibrosis. That's not the only thing I do for this. I have se several separate techniques um, that I use specifically for fibrosis, and those are in my plastic surgery uh, recovery and fibrosis massage CE class. But I just wanted to show you because so many people were asking like, what is this? Where do I get it? And it's relatively cheap. Um, I think it's under $40. It's on Amazon. It's a ge good German company. You'll see this is the name of the company. It's backwards, but it's B-E-U-R-E-R. -E -R. It's a good German company. They make a lot of um, highly regarded tools. And this is one of them. And then um, as far as these balls, this is um, Hometics. Can you see Hometics? This is Hometics. Um, and this has several different brands, but you can find like Vibrating Massage Ball on Amazon. Um, this, that's, you can't, that's sort of, you can sort of see the name of the brand. Um, so these, this is my short video just to kind of share. Um, my ideas on fibrosis and um, swelling and vibration. Um, as far as the vibration plate, um, those are good. There's some interesting studies on vibration plate that it may help. Um, it may help the muscles. It may help um, the bone density. But what vibration plate also has is a shearing force. So I would not use the vibration plate. I would not have someone stand on a vibration plate until they were cleared for vigorous exercise if they had an abdominoplasty. And I've also seen cases of people after the Brazilian butt lift, um, their massage therapist, or they decided to do it themselves to try to get to try to get rid of their swelling in the first couple weeks when that fat graft is fresh like before they're really sitting on their butt they were using this vibration plate and they saw that um, the vibration plate seemed to negatively affect their fat transfer area i.e. they said their butt was smaller in the days after um, they used that vibration plate so if you are um, after a Brazilian butt lift or any kind of fat transfer operation, I would stay away from the vibration plate until your um, surgeon is clearing you for vigorous exercise or you're, you know, applying pressure yourself to the fat graft area and um, your surgeon is okay with you doing that. Um, so that's my quick tips on vibration. I hope that this really helped everybody and um, leave comments below and definitely read um, the research. It's very exciting um, to learn all the effects that vibration has on the body. All right, have a good night.